Hi, I'm David Dacos, the Director of Campus Ethics Programs at the Markula Center for Applied Ethics, and I'm here today with Nathaniel Fick, the author of One Bullet Away, The Making of Marine Officer. And Nate very kindly came down to Santa Clara University today and gave a terrific talk on campus on the topic, really, of making decisions in combat. And we thought we'd chat with Nate uh, a little bit about that today. Nate, could you say a little more about, just in general, the sort of changing nature of war into which uh, our American infantry troops are going these days? Mm -hmm. The conventional tank-on-tank -tank battles of World War II or even of the Gulf War are over. Uh, we're, no, we're not looking at a future, I think, of uniformed militaries fighting uniformed militaries in set-piece battles. Uh, where there are very clear chains of command and hierarchies and civilians are by and large not on the battlefield. Um, I think that's ancient history. And the wars of the future are going to look a lot more like Iraq and Afghanistan, or they're going to look like the nuclear competitions that we see in places like Iran and North Korea. And so uh, we need to train leaders at every level in the military, and we need to develop institutions in the military, and we need to write doctrine in the military that's flexible, that, that learns and adapts. And we're pushing decisions with national strategic repercussions down to the shoulders of very junior people. So the intersection of huge advances in weapons technology and the media's all-seeing eye, the 24-hour news cycle, means that a corporal, a 19 or 20-year-old American soldier can have an impact that a general, say, in, in Napoleon's army or even George Patton's army couldn't have. Uh, so this is a very different world where the uh, wars are fought among the people and those wars are beamed daily into living rooms all around the world. Um, Nate, when he was uh, in the Marines, was in a reconnaissance unit, a captain leading a uh, reconnaissance platoon. And I'm wondering, uh, Nate, if you could give us a sense of what that uh, strategic corporal now might be seeing and feeling as he is walking down a street in Baghdad on a combat mission. You see... Uh, the, the closeness of the, of the, of the environment. Um, one of the rational conclusions after the Gulf War was, okay, no more tank on tank. And so um, our adversaries uh, changed the way they fought. And in Iraq, the way they fought was to take off their uniforms and melt into the people and do it in the cities and urban areas. And so try to make it harder and harder for us, the American forces, to separate the insurgents from the people. Uh, because every, every innocent civilian you kill is a huge gust of wind in the insurgency's sails. And so a rational choice for them is to fight among the people. Uh, so when you're walking down a street in Baghdad, um, you, you might see um, crowds of people on the street. And maybe somebody takes a pot shot at you from inside a crowd. Or um, a bomb explodes on the side of the road, but you have no idea where the trigger man is, or, or who detonated it, or where. Uh, you see walls and, and trees and gates and rooftops and windows and doors. And so it's this 360 degree threat environment that forces uh, the American troops to make you know, a thousand decisions a minute. Um, and inevitably, they're going to get some of these decisions wrong. The rules of engagement, as a civilian like myself understands them, uh, are the, the rules that govern what a soldier and commander may uh, commit, uh, do in combat in a situation to a great extent, and is my understanding. And I'm wondering, um, Nate, given the changing nature of warfare uh, that we're seeing now, do you think that contemporary rules of engagement have hit the right balance between protection of civilians and protection of force? I mean, the, the rules of engagement are, um, are ever-evolving, but they're rooted in some core principles. And I, I think the principles go back to just war theory. They go back to Augustine and Aquinas and this, this tradition. Um, and, and two of the core principles, um, and obviously when we're talking about rules of engagement, we're talking about rules for the conduct of war, not rules for the decision to go to war. Uh, and two of the bedrock principles are the, the concept of pr proportionality and the concept of non-combatant immunity. And so your response on the battlefield has to be proportionate to the threat that presents itself, and it has to recognize the sanctity of civilian noncombatants. And uh, I, I think that the rules of engagement as they're currently drawn do respect both of those things, but um, you know, as, as the nature of warfare changes and as these wars uh, become urban wars among the people, 
actually executing those principles becomes harder and harder to do. Nate, when you were uh, in the service there in Afghanistan and in Iraq, I no doubt you were having to make a sort of a zillion split-second decisions in situations with kind of constantly changing and really threatening variables. Uh, hence, ethical decision-making being incredibly complex and uh, fraught with difficulty. What was your source of inspiration to kind of get you through um, the next battle with a sense of your integrity intact? Mm. Uh, I mean, I was fortunate to have been uh, um, formed, I guess, in, in three communities um, between, between high school and being a Marine officer. Um, one was my Jesuit high school, where the, the ethos was men for others. Uh, and, and that concept of service meant a lot to all of us. It was, it was not just something chiseled in the stone above the door. It was, you know, we saw it lived by the, by the Jesuits on our faculty every day. Um, when I was in college, I studied the classics and um, developed, I think, an appreciation for uh, the, some of the traditional conceptions of citizenship and the, and the duties that we all have in a free society to give something back and to be a part of this broader polity. Uh, and then in the Marine Corps, uh, I went through, I had the good fortune to go through one of the best leadership training programs in the world, and uh, where, where my first commanding officer said um, uh, that his leadership philosophy could be boiled down to three words, officers eat last. Uh, this notion that with rank, uh, you don't get more privilege, you, you get more obligation, more duty. And so I think those three traditions, um, individually and as a group, were a powerful source of, uh, of, of motivation for me, of guidance for me, uh, kind, of a, kind of a lodestar to, 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 to orient on um, as the world evaporated around us in some cases. Well, we've just been speaking with Nathaniel Fick about ethics in combat. Uh, he served uh, tours of duty in Afghanistan and Iraq and is the author of One Bullet Away, The Making of a Marine Officer. Nate, thanks so much for coming to Santa Clara. It's an honor. I enjoyed being here. Thank you.